Hello and welcome to GT Sports Mates and you join us with a comeback race. Now what do I mean by a comeback race? Well basically we've been off for a few weeks. We have been off for a few weeks, we've had a little bit of a break and instead of jumping straight into the daily races and destroying our driver racing we decided to get a little bit more familiarised with the game whilst we've had some time away basically. And as you can see I'm loading a replay. And the reason I'm loading a replay is because this is the race that I want to show you which we took part in as part of the comeback race. So, why this race? Well, basically, I'm going to go out and say this is possibly the greatest race I've ever been involved in. And not just myself, no. You'll see a familiar name there in second place. Um, that's our fellow driver, John. And also in seventh, that's Josh as well. Now, fortunately, Josh did have internet issues, so he did get kicked out of the game. But me and John are going to go from start to finish. Let's see how we get on now as we get on the way here at Sardegna Road Track A. And straight away, as you can see, the Italian went from third to first in the Aston Martin, getting an absolutely fantastic launch off the line there. And John as well, looking to make a move round the outside. I'm trying to give him as much room as possible. Giving him the clearance there, he just grazes the gravel, but manages to get back on track without spinning the car. And up into second, John goes. I should say, remaining in second, John stays um, because like I said I was in first and now I'm in third so I'm down to third place now so Sardegna Road Track A what can I tell you not too much if I'm being completely honest with you we've probably raced this track a handful of times so not very often at all don't particularly know the track all that well but it is a phenomenal track and with these high speed cars especially the Mustang which is very quick at the top end these type of tracks are perfect. As you're going to see, unfortunately for John, being in the Scooby, the top end isn't all that good. So this track is not really suited to that type of car. If he can remain in the slipstream, he's in with a real shot. But if he loses it, he will struggle. So I'm just going to give him a little bit of a boost here as he almost went sideways, but he did collect it. So what we're going to do is get away from the guys behind us, who, as you can see, are very, very close. Now, unfortunately, John just goes off and hits the wall and he's going to drop down into fourth place and that's going to promote us up into second place as we come around turn number 14 I think this is there's 15 turns that's turn number 14 now this is well it's not straight as you can see the massive kink in the road but it's completely flat out this is turn 15 there's only 15 turns and this is the home straight now this could be very interesting you can see the gap though we've managed to pull away quite well now I'm in the slipstream of the Aston Martin in first and with it being such a long um, straight you really have time to catch up now I wasn't close enough to make a move but look how close I am to him now right on his back bumper and he did have a gap that's how powerful the slipstream is on this track because of how long the actual track is now the Ford I think does have a better top end than the Aston Martin but the Aston Martin is much better through the corners so it's going to be a real cat and mouse chase as we go over these next five laps with six to go we've already down one so five to go as we are trying our hardest to keep in the slip team of the Aston Martin to see if we can make anything happen as we come down what I like to think of as the back straight looking at the map there the back straight I think that's a decent way to call it coming down now in the slipstream as much can diving on the left hand side taking that inside line away from the Aston Martin getting around the corner and taking first place as the Aston Martin runs wide though very luckily manages to collect that back up very well driven I will say actually the, um, the, the Italian nurse right? very very well handled that um, what could have been a very bad incident for himself but doing very well there now and the Spaniard in third come from really absolutely nowhere he's looking to make a move now the Italian just can't get the move done as I managed to just park the car right on the apex the good thing about this car actually you can make it very very big in the corners so if you can just get ahead you can park it on the apex and it's very hard to get around but we're in trouble now as I said this is a long straight and if that Aston Martin or any of the cars get behind me this long straight will show just how quickly they will catch up as we're coming down now braking very hard into turn number one here hoping not to run wide at all we don't hit the gravel we're doing a very good job there but look behind look how close these first four cars all have there's not much in myself and fourth place and the italian um yeah the italian that peaking his nose maybe thinking of having a look now i'm very rusty as you can probably tell the gear changes are not brilliant 
But that's what this race was all about, getting used to the track and getting used to the cars once again. Now, this is turn number six, I believe it is, coming up to turn seven. Now, this is completely flat out all the way down here, which is ideal in a fast top-end car. As you can see, the Italian going, side to, uh, going to the side of me, looking to make a move. I'm just going to hold the inside line as long as I possibly can, because I'm trying to defend as well as actually put in some decent speed because if I don't they're just going to come flying past now the guy in third almost lost it but managed to gather his um, gather that back up really well though she's done well to control that slide as we come down to this is possibly the hardest corner on the track this one right here turn number 13 I think it is it's such a tricky one to get it's fast and narrow you've got to be on the ball though, otherwise you will lose speed and this one as well you lose just a millisecond through the last um, through turn 14 and it is multiplied by the end of the straight by quite a significant amount. But here we are on lap 3 coming down the home straight one more time and we are feeling comfortable in first but we are going to start feeling the pressure as you can see now three of us almost side by side into turn 1 and now four as we all come around the corner looking to make moves and hopefully for us that doesn't mean going backwards. We want the guys behind us to start fighting for position, but so far they're doing a very, very good job just keeping up and maintaining what position they're in. Because they've not only got to attack with me, but they've got to defend their position. So really, they've got a harder job than I have as well at the minute. So I'm trying to use that to my advantage. Round turn number six now, very tricky corner as well. So um, very tight. It doesn't look very tight on the map if you can see there, but it is actually a lot tighter than it looks. And I'm gonna go defensive straight away because I do not wanna give an inch of room to that Aston Martin on the inside. But it's very hard to defend both sides, as you can see here. So as I'm breaking very, very hard, I'm trying to cover all the bases and it's so, so difficult to do so. But look how close the top four are. It's absolutely insane just how close you are. And John Lowe in just in fifth there, he's done very well to keep up. Like I said, not very top end, um, powerful car. It does struggle at the top end, so he's doing very well indeed to keep up. And I've just dropped from first to third. Look at that, terrible by me. But luckily, in one corner, managing to get an undercut on two cars in one corner. I've never done that before. I've got an undercut on one car in a corner, never managed to undercut two in one corner. I went from first to third, back to first, all in the space of one corner. Absolutely unbelievable and i'm so happy with how i managed to do that i don't even know how i did that like i said comeback race and i'm just completely feeling it. i don't know what was so good tonight for me but the spaniard really missing his braking zone going off into a massive crash i think he can kiss his podium chances goodbye there now but that does not mean it gets any easier no it does not as you can see on the map we are so close to the first three cars in fact you just saw the aston martin peeking his nose behind me then um, and he's looking to make a move, definitely looking to make a move. He's sizing me up, where can he strike where I will be at a disadvantage? Now, he is better in the corners, but like I said, it's very easy to make the Mustang very, very wide. All I hope is that the two guys behind me don't team up and try to go both sides of me, but I can only defend one way, so let's hope they don't do that. As we come down now to turn number nine, um, and very, very long and hard breaking zone, as the guy in... Well, he was in third, I think, actually. Um, comes flying past. And I thought I could have got the undercut, and I just started to lose. I had to back out and give him the position. And I think that was a phenomenal piece of driving from the Dutchman. Uh, going from where I think he was in third to first in one corner. Brilliantly done. So now I am chasing down the Dutchman. Luckily, there's a bit of a gap. I'm not sure what happened to the Italian, though. I think he might have just hit the wall slightly. Um, but we're not going to worry too much about that as we need to focus on the guy ahead. And we are now comfortably sat in his slipstream. And like I said, this is a very long stretch of road and it's completely flat out. And you'll see just how quickly we start to catch up as he tries to break the toe by going to the right. He's not going to be able to. He's going to try again and go to the left. And I'm just going to sit in his toe. But he's going to make me work for it as we are on the last lap, making me go all the way around the outside. Am I going to get the grip? Am I going to pull the move off? And I think I have just about done it. Going all the way around there at turn one. I'm gaining first place back. I have no idea 
what came over me in this race. Everything just felt perfect. And it, like I said, comeback race, I was not expecting it at all. I felt so, so slow, actually. And I, I felt like I was making mistakes, especially the gearing. But it, everything just seemed to click. But the race isn't over yet. We've got at least another three quarters of a lap to go and a lot can happen. And you can see just how close the top three are. This could still end up in complete catastrophe. If we all end up crashing, we could drop down. As you can see, the guys behind, I'm not that far behind. So we all need to drive very carefully as well as attacking. I'm going to try and defend as much as I can here. Just making that Ford as big as I possibly can through them corners. And this is where the Ford struggles a little bit through these fast bends coming up to turn number 13, the hardest turn here on the track, as I've said. Hoping to do a decent job, doing a decent job, I think. And the guy, the Dutchman, went from second to third. He hit the wall. He actually hit the wall, which gives us a break. But like I said, this is now where it gets interesting. I'm in the lead on the final lap. Very long, fast piece of track here. And that Aston Martin is not far behind. As he got the pace, can the slip beam help him get past and go across the checker flag? I need this forward to be faster in a straight line. Am I going to be able to play? He's going for the move. We're going to come across the line and we're going to come across the line in first place. I have no idea how we pull that off. Absolutely no idea how we pull that off. But that is possibly my finest race I've ever done. And I've got to give big shout outs to the, to the Italian. Look how close that finish was. If that finish line was a little bit further on, there's no way I don't think I would have been able to stop him from coming past. Just absolutely unbelievable. Now, I know they don't do this, but I wanted to just show you a few of the things in the race that I thought were possibly key to the success of getting a P1. Now, this was on lap two, currently in second, as you can see, and I have to go for the move. I dart down the left-hand side on, of the Italian, and that takes me up into first place on the second lap. The Italian just runs wide a little bit there, but he does gather it and he does very, very well indeed. Um, so that put me up into first place. And that was on the second lap. The fourth lap now. So only two more laps to go after this. And this, I think, was possibly my greatest move I've ever done on Gran Turismo. I went from first here, as you can see, down to third in this corner. I just tapped the side. Did you see that? I just tap it and I drop so much speed. I go from first to third, but then I get the undercut on both these as we come around this turn here. Just about getting the undercut on them both. And I honestly think if I hadn't got that undercut there and I would have been sat in third, I may not have come home in first place. But that wasn't the only one. No, this one on the start of the last lap coming into turn one and the Dutchman making me work very hard for oh, P1 indeed. He goes defensive very late and he makes me go all the way around the outside. I have no idea where I found the grip though. I have no idea how we did that. But anyway, there we go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our comeback race. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. I absolutely love that and a massive shout out to the guys who was awesome in the lobby. So until next time, that's all from us here at GT Sports, mates, and we'll see you then.